friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card for Create a Smile Stamp. Although actually it's going to be two cards because I was able to get a bonus card with the technique that I tried. I'm going to be using the Big Hearts Polka as well as the Lovely Critters from Create a Smile. And then I wanted to add in some dies for the design of my card and those are going to be the Double Stitched Hearts from Cat Scrappiness. To get started, I wanted to create a custom color paper, so here I'm using Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide ink. You could of course just use a colored cardstock and that would save you quite a bit of time. I just don't have that much colored cardstock in my stash because I find it hard to keep up with having all the colors that I want. So usually I can make a piece of the color I want with all of my inks. but. Again, you could just create that tone-on-tone -tone look by picking a piece of colored cardstock because I'm going to be layering for a monochromatic look by putting the Big Hearts Polka stencil over this and using a different color of Distress Ink. So I find to, if you want to lay down a lot of color, sometimes it's helpful to start by putting the ink pad directly to your card. So you saw that I kind of like smushed my ink pad all over my card first and then I blended it out because it takes a lot longer to add the ink when you are just adding it with the blending tool. Next up, I'm going to tape my Create a Smile stencil to that card back. Uh, it's a kind of card panel. I'll put this all on a card when I'm finished. And I use Frog Delicate Surface Painters Tape because I um, find that it doesn't rip my paper of all the pa you know all the tapes I've ever tried. I've tried Micropore, I've tried Washi, I um, regular Painters Tape, all that. The Delicate Surface Frog Tape works the best for me, and even on that one, I kind of have to take off some of the stickiness if I don't want it to rip my paper. And I'm going to use a different color of Distress Ink. I believe this is the, I want to say Fired Brick, but I think that that's too dark. It's one of the red Distress Oxide inks. I'll have links to all the products in the video description, so if you wanted to know exactly which color I chose, and maybe Barn Door. I have a hard time remembering which one are the colors in Oxide and which ones aren't yet. And I think that there's more Oxides coming out, so this will be even more of a problem soon. But... I just laid it through so that it kind of creates a tone on tone look and I thought about adding some shimmer spray through it because the Distress Oxides would react with the spray and kind of create a fun look but I decided I wanted to keep it a bit more clean and simple. Next up I am going to color some of the critters. So I am going to color, I colored two critters on camera. I colored the whole set though. So when I first I thought I'll just color one just so you kind of get an idea because I'm going to use a lot of the same colors throughout. And then when I did the shading here on my little pig, and I believe I'm using R20, R22, and R14. R14 is the darkest color. I did some really bizarre shading. I mean, it looks fine in the end, and I did totally use it on a card, but the way that I shaded it didn't make much sense. I should have shaded, should have given the darker parts to be on the two sides of his face to make his face look kind of rounded. But instead, I put the shadow on the bottom, and I just, I really didn't like the way that that turned out. I'm also going to use an R00 for the lightest parts of the ears. And I'm going to take these, this color combo, like once I saw that I liked it and saw that it blended well, I decided to use it on other critters. I think that that's a good tip for if you want to color a bunch of things, like pick a color combination and kind of just stick with it. You know, you've gone through all the trouble of figuring out what you like. And also, I would recommend recording color com combos that you really like. You know, if you're saying, like, this is my best set of coral-type pinks, recording that. Um, but I did the same thing with his bottom. I put the shading on the very bottom of the pig instead of on the two sides. And I didn't put the cast shadow that his head would have created on his body. So didn't I wasn't really very happy with the shading I did there. Still a cute little pig, still totally usable, but then I decided I should color a different critter for you and actually show you, you know, a, a better shading method that probably looks a little bit more realistic or accurate. So here I'm going with BG10, BG15, and BG13. I will say this color combination, I really like the colors, but they can be very tricky to blend. The difference between BG10 and BG13 is pretty drastic. And I usually have to do a tip to tip. I usually have to lay down some of the BG10 to start with so that there's a good amount of it. 
sometimes I like to try starting with my darkest and blending out, but the BG10 is just so light that it's hard to blend into the BG13, and I find having several layers is much more helpful. And I like to put down that whole layer of BG10 as my lightest color, then go over it with 13 and then back with 10 because adding more layers of ink blend them together better. However, it is to me a very nice tealy sort of blue for Valentine's Day. So again, I'm going to come back in and use it over and over. And instead of using oranges, I'm going to use the coral pinks that I picked out for the pig as, you know, the oranges and, and reds throughout these different critters. I did have to, um, so like I colored the snail purposely with these blue and pink colors, even though that might not be the most accurate color for a, a snail, just because... I wanted them to be consistent. I knew that I'd want to use a few on the card. I did the same thing with the turtle. I made his shell in the corally pinks and his body in the blues. Not a traditional color, but well coordinated. However, with the lion, I I thought about it, but I just I didn't I couldn't quite bring myself to color the lion this blue and pink combination and I did go in with some yellows, but you can see that I continued those themes throughout on all my different critters. I used the double stitch hearts from Cat Scrappiness to cut three heart windows. And I was going back and forth about whether or not I wanted to try to add all three critters in. I think that would have looked cute too, but then there really like wasn't a great place for the sentiment. So I thought I may as well, instead of using another critter, extend my critters to more cards and make, you know, extra cards with them and put the sentiment through one of the hearts. I decided to pop it up on some foam tape just so that it added a little bit of interest to it and it looks more like the critters are kind of traveling underneath it even though again the turtle there is a sea turtle so he should be swimming and there's no water for him and then the snail would be on land so they really wouldn't be together you know most likely but that's kind of my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm just adding a generous amount of foam tape. You could have also taped your dies in place or like tried to cut some thin craft foam instead and put the holes in the same place, use the you know heart dies to cut them out. But because I use the same heart die in two places, I think positioning that would have been pretty tricky. So I, in the end, opted not to do that. I'm going to use my ATG as a strong adhesive. And I wanted to mention I did cut all of these out with my scan and cut. Create a Smile does not have coordinating dies for their stamp sets, which is not a problem for me because like I said, I have my scan and cut, um, but their images are also pretty easy to fussy cut. So I like that about them and, you know, they're not in as much encouraging you to spend, spend, spend to get um, all those coordinating dies. Although I love coordinating dies and I, you know, I have bought them in the past and still sometimes choose to buy them even though I have a scan and cut. For my sentiment, in that stamp set, there are some ways you can build sentiments rather than just forcing it to say from the heart. They, uh, when Christine designed it, she did from the and heart separately so that you could mix and match the different parts of the sentiments. And I like that about a lot of Create a Smile stamp sets. Not only do they have a lot of punny sentiments, so like there's the hearts on the animals and then, you know, using the from the heart or the, the sentiment that says lovely, which pairs well with the hearts. They also are kind of broken up to be a little bit more versatile and I appreciate that. So now I'm ready to tuck my little critters under and I think that putting them down first before you put the panel down would be a smart idea. I also think I probably should have stamped that sentiment before I put the foam tape on the back because I needed to make sure that it was positioned perfectly within the heart and because I didn't think about that ahead of time I wound up having to use my misty my misty kind of saved the day there because if you had used a stamp block and tried to stamp through that foam tape the stamp may not have been thick enough so if you don't have the misty um, my recommendation would be to you know kind of think ahead and stamp that sentiment down before you uh, add the foam tape and add that dimension here to the card. So once that was finished, I still had some critters left and I still had these hearts left because a lot of times I color the whole set of critters in one go so that I can use the rest on a future card. 
But with those hearts just kind of sitting there ready to go, I thought there's no reason to wait for the future. Like I may as well just kind of use up these supplies and make one more Valentine right away. So I started thinking about how I could arrange the hearts in a clean and simple card where I'm just going to put them on a white background. Again, because I'm trying to use up scraps. I'm not trying to like create the most, you know, elaborate design, but just use up what I have. Not that the critters are scraps. I mean more the hearts. Because of course the critters could go on a nice elaborate card in the future. And what I decided to do was change the orientation a little bit. So rather than perfectly recreating the first card, I flipped the card on its side. I used it as a um, portrait card as opposed to a landscape. And these are both A2 size cards. They are four and a quarter by five and a half when they're folded. And it's a standard um, eight and a half by 11 card cut down. I decided I would also pop up the critters in this instance, just because again, with it being a clean and simple card, um, laying everything flat might be a little bit less interesting. So I did use some foam tape, but this time I used a much thinner foam tape. Unfortunately, this is a foam tape that I picked up at like a local discount shop and I haven't been able to find again. So I'm kind of on the hunt for a really thin foam tape. If you have any recommendations, like the thinnest foam tape you've ever used, leave a comment and uh, let me know about where you found it because I'm like beginning to run out and I'd like to know a, a better source than hoping that my discount shop has it. So again, I stamped that sentiment there in the on the heart and that completed my second bonus card. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. In the video description, I will leave you a link to Create a Smile as well as to all the products that I use so you can check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.